Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, so today's video, we'll be jumping into wing ribs. Uh, so I'll be completing all of section 14. Wing ribs are actually done, they're on the other side of the camera. Uh, but just so you know ahead of time, this video will include all of section 14 for wing ribs. Um, so yeah, anyways, we'll get to it and uh, get to building. this time lapse real quick here you'll notice that I uh, am not using the uh, part that's supposed to go in here this part is on back order it's the VA 146 um, but this part here should be clear code prior according to the instructions should be clear code prior to uh, match drilling this angle here so in lieu of that just to make sure that things aren't moving around um, I just took a piece of that same thickness material as that uh, VA 146 and through Clico's around it, just to kind of maintain spacing, verified that a number 30 drill bit uh, cleanly goes through and doesn't have any kind of like awkward uh, angle or any, any kind of interference there. So I know that this is how that VA146 should fit once I get it in. Um, so now I feel comfortable moving forward and match drilling. The reason why I wanted to do this uh, was just to prevent any kind of, if, if this was getting torqued in any way to where I would get this part match drill for this angle here, then later on when I get this back ordered part in, um, I didn't want to have this not line up perfectly. So anyways, this is just maintaining that in position. I'll get that match drilled and then I'll leave a note here in the plans, uh, making sure that I do not go further than, uh, than I'm able to without this back ordered part being in uh, to get uh, Clico riveted in there. Um, anyways, back to the time lapse. Um, but it's one of those things where you just want to get all the way through it 
because uh, I'm sure if I had to pick this up tomorrow, I would not have been happy. I'd have that be my first task of the day uh, when it comes to uh, building time. So anyways, these are all deburred. Um, quick lessons learned. If I would start over and do this again, I would deburr prior to fluting. Um, these flutes made it a pain to deburr. It was a pain. It actually wore a wider groove. I don't know if you can see on camera or not. Uh, but just in my wheel here, it, 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 uh, it dug in a, a, a groove that's probably twice the width of the normal groove um, that it had for the skin. So anyways, um, <laughs> I'm rambling. It's, it's late. Uh, but deburr before fluting. That's already a tedious enough process in the very beginning. Fluting all these ribs here. Knock it all out in the beginning. Uh, other than that though, uh, these have been invaluable. Uh, these, uh, these grinders here. So the Scott Sprout wheels are from Cleveland Aircraft Tools. Um, this is the, I don't even know, I'm guessing it's a two inch wheel and a one inch. Um, those wheels there and then just these grinders from Harbor Freight. These I think were no more than $20 each at Harbor Freight. Uh, but these are awesome. Not necessarily um, the, the angle one here, but the straight one, uh, just for getting inside of those ribs there, or getting inside of the, uh, the, light, the lightning holes. Um, I took a lot of time and really, really made sure these were deburred, more than just getting rid of the burr, but actually made them very, very smooth, because I know, <laughs> I have a strong feeling, uh, that when this is all assembled, I'm gonna be in here with my arm fully inside, I'm gonna probably be really struggling to get in certain areas, whether it's riveting or running um, lines. Anyways, one of these to be perfectly smooth. And I don't know if you would be able to do that, uh, or I probably could, just take a long time. Uh, but just with the standard handheld deburring tool and sandpaper scotch um that would have taken forever. Uh, but these are awesome. Uh, so anyways, I'm done. Uh, tomorrow, we're we'll getting to uh, boring out these holes for conduit pedal lines and getting them actually started and uh, riveted on, getting closer to the end of this section here. Um, so anyways, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Alrighty, so again, that hole, uh, or this tubing, is 5 8 tubing uh, from McMaster Car, not the stuff that Vans uh, offers online, but that was out of stock. Uh, but anyways, uh, I drilled up to, let me see if I can do basic math here, uh, that's going to be 11 sixteenths, I believe. Yes, 11 sixteenths is what did it for me with the McMaster, uh, McMaster Car uh, nylon 5 8 um, So you'll see here, I'm going to put it in the other side. Yeah, anyways, the idea here is it kind of locks itself in place. It finds that uh, inner groove. I think it's just about there. Um, I may be a hair undersized at 11 16ths, but I figure it's probably better to err on the side of caution and go with a smaller hole versus uh, too big of a hole. Um, so anyways, that should help. Uh, I'll also put in a, uh, like mentioned online, uh, they reference using a dab of, um, I believe gasket maker. Um, so some RTV, probably some Permatex. Um, I'll research that too and find out what works best. Um, but that's probably the plan is just put a little bead around the side of it. Prevent any kind of uh, vibration or anything like that. But that's way down the line. Uh, nothing I'm gonna worry about now, but in the future, um, once this is all together in one big part, we'll worry about that then. But there we go. Alrighty, this is the, uh, the left ribs. I'm gonna knock these out off camera real quick. Same thing as before, nothing too exciting. So when I come back, these will all be done. Real quick, uh, right wing is all laid out there. Um, so starting with the right one, then I'll do the left one after. Um, but what I wanted to mention really quick here, which is awesome, um, is trying to read, okay, so here's, here's what, ah, uh, come on. Here's the layout 
according to the plans, uh, but this is for the left wing. So it gets real tricky. Um, just try to verify that you have all the ribs in the right orientation because once I rivet it, I really do not want to have any oopsies and have to undo anything. I want to make sure it's 100% certain. So anyways, it's kind of hard to look at uh, the schematic here because they only give you the uh, schematic for the left wing only, not the right wing. So what I'm getting to is a cool little trick here. So what you can do if you have an iPhone, okay, yeah, so you go into edit, uh, then in this bottom right hand corner where you can go to uh, to edit to like flip it and rotate it and whatnot, click on that button and then the option in the upper left hand corner uh, will actually mirror it. So it's going to be mirrored. So you now can kind of ignore the uh, ignore the text portions because you can't read that anymore. Um, but now you can actually hold that up right in front of your face, walk down the line and verify uh, wherever flanges are supposed to be pointed inboard, like for instance, so these ones here, inboard, 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 outboard, outboard, inboard, and basically just go down the line and see it as you're walking down the length of your spar, of your, uh, your spar there to make sure everything is, is in order. It was kind of really difficult to do it without it having this mirrored, but mirrored is very nice. You can actually see what you're working on and not have to mentally uh, flip it inside your head. So anyways, that helped. Wanted to reference that real quick, and uh, now we're going to get to it. Uh, I'm going to start riveting, so I'll probably put this camera somewhere and get to bucking. It's going to be a whole lot of bucking, so enjoy the time lapse. So wing ribs went together really well. Um, overall, no uh, no issues or uh, really any oopsies or anything to make note of. All right, so like I mentioned, wing ribs went together really well. Uh, there are a couple of things that I would, if I was to do this again uh, and start over, uh, that I would do differently. Uh, the big key takeaway is I would definitely deburr those ribs first before fluting them just to make your whole life a whole lot easier. Um, not only is it harder to deburr them after fluting, uh, but also the ribs themselves, as you're you're working with them, getting them on the spar, sometimes it's hard, you're having to push a little bit to get those wing ribs to, to nest inside of the, the flanges of the spar. Uh, it got all cut up, like each of my fingers, my wife actually asked me, she's like, what's going on with your hands? Uh, it's because I had a bunch of those little cuts that you would never think that, um, you wouldn't think this aluminum would be that uh, that likely to cut you, um, but over time when you're working with, interacting with 30 different ribs, uh, odds are high that you're gonna cut yourself up a little bit. So anyways, if I was to do this again, I would deburr for the beginning. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention that I'm sure a couple of you saw and possibly cringed at uh, was regarding uh, getting my uh, bolts torqued down after the fact. So you probably saw me using a drill. Um, I was not using this to torque those down. I had this on a very low setting on the, uh, whatever this torque setting, clutch setting, whatever this is, you can actually hear it goes. Uh, I had the setting really low, so this was not used to torque it, it was just used to get that, uh, to take all the slop out of those bolts, that way I wasn't sitting there cranking on each one with the, uh, with the ratcheting wrench. Anyways, I did not torque it down with this, I took it to the proper torque spec afterwards with the torque wrench. Uh, so, peace of mind there for those of you who are cringing. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to mention that did make my life a little bit easier with those bolts is it is overwhelming looking at that schematic. I'll put it somewhere on the screen here. It's overwhelming looking at it at first, trying to figure out where each bolt goes and the mental math of left wing, right rib, top side, bottom side, whatever. Um, so ahead of time, before starting those bolts, I took visual inventory, counted on, on that page uh, how many of each one I would need for each spar, 
and then went ahead and created just a little layout here to do all my inventory at once. So anyways, went through the baggies and counted out however many I needed for each one. So I placed them on this sheet here, which made it easy to look at the schematic when I was getting ready to put them into the spars. Anyways, made my life a little bit easier having a nice layout. Wherever it says like one plus one, two plus two, three plus three, uh, that's, if it says three plus three, that means there were three belonging to one spar, three belonging to the other. So made it easy, have this orderly ahead of time, because uh, when you're looking at that schematic later on down the line and you're looking at these bags of bolts, um, it can be overwhelming looking at uh, all the different bolts required. It is pretty foolproof though, uh, from what I experienced when it came to those bolts. Because if you have the bolt in the wrong location, you're going to see either not enough thread or you're going to see far too much of the shank without thread. Um, or far too much of the shank and then all the thread. So anyways, it's pretty foolproof where they go. You'll know if you're getting the wrong hole. Like if you got the top versus the bottom of the spar. Anyways, those are my real key takeaways. So next section, section 15, rear spar. I'll try to do that in the same video format. Um, not sure if I can do this continually going forward, getting all of the section in one video but I'll give it my best shot. I think I should be able to, it doesn't look too intense. Uh, it just looks like a lot of repetition again like this one. So anyways, made it this far. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you have subscribed. And if you have any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, or you just wanna say hi, say hi in the comments down below. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Adios.